about that. Good evening and welcome to Cleaning with Essential Oils. We are going to talk about how you can use your essential oils to clean and to um, use them in your home. Um, I know we always hear about the therapeutic benefits of essential oils and all the things they can do for your health, which are amazing. Um, and we talk about that all the time. And I have a lot of other classes where we go into really um, deep detail on how you can use them for therapeutic benefits. But tonight, we're going to talk about how you can actually use them in your home, um, as well as use them therapeutically, and um, actually make some really good cleaners with them, and save a lot of money. So let's get started. Um, I'd like to give a little bit of background. Um, my name is Melissa Jones, and I um, am from the Herbal Homestead, and I, my path to essential oils um, came very similarly to a lot of other people's. Um, just had some chronic illnesses and wanted some um, help and support and wanted it in a natural, um, holistic fashion. So really got tired of being defined by my illness and really wanted that better quality of life and to experience less pain. And I wanted that time to enjoy with my family, wanted to be able to do the hobbies that I love, like kayaking and hiking and not worrying about, you know, being sick. So essential oils have made a tremendous difference in my life, and I wanted to share that with you. And tonight we're going to do some fun things and learn a lot of new things. So please um, put, your, put your feet up and maybe grab a cup of tea. And I always try to teach my classes like we are sitting across – from each other at the kitchen table. So, um, and, you know, just real life way. So, so my goal tonight is to educate, inspire, and empower and enable you to become a healer in your own home. That's why I do this is because I really believe that you can become a healer in your own home. And, you know, that is such a powerful thing um, to be able to experience. To know that you have the knowledge and the tools to help your family in many ways, not you know with their health, and then also making sure that your cleaning products, which we're going to talk about tonight, are not toxic. So, I want uh, what I teach you tonight about essential oils. I want you to be able to implement that into your own life, and I want you to be able to take that knowledge that you gain and convert it into action. So. I by the time we finish this class, you're going to have some really clear instructions um, and recipes on how you can make your own cleaners. But before we do that, I just want to take a moment to go over <clears throat> some of the things that you can use essential oils for. And like I said earlier, you can use it for um, therapeutic benefits, um, like mental clarity, excuse me, things like um, balancing your hormones, anything from that to maintaining your metabolism and supporting your blood sugar. These are really therapeutic things that you can use the essential oils for. They have, provide a lot of support for a lot of different ailments. And um, we, like I said, I have a lot of other classes that you can check out where we go into some pretty deep detail on some of the oils and some of those therapeutic benefits. Also, you can use the oils for first aid. So instead of, um, you know, going for that traditional first aid kit in our home, we have what we call an essential oil first aid kit. And we have a lot of really neat things in there. Um, like if somebody gets a bug bite or a scrape, we know to grab the lavender and things like that. So very helpful to be able to use the essential oils for first aid. We also use our essential oils for pet care. So any kind of pet issues, we um, grab the bottle of essential oil and definitely make use of that. So tonight, we're going to talk about non-toxic cleaning. So we can make all-purpose disinfectant, furniture polish, laundry soap, dish soap, window cleaner, you name it. Um, air freshener, right now I have my diffuser going, and I'm actually diffusing On Guard, which um, not only smells amazing, but also cleans and disinfects the air. 
And also, I'm sitting really right next to it. It's right beside me. And um, I actually am being able to get the benefit of having those droplets of essential oil that are coming out with the mist. That's actually coming um, to me, and I am being able to absorb all of that. So very nice to be able to not only have an air freshener, but have a therapeutic benefit as well. So natural body products are another way that you can use the essential oils. Um, you can make your own toothpaste, your own mouthwash, um, your own deodorant and soap. And we're, I'm actually going to be teaching a class soon um, where we go into some greater detail um, about the natural body um, products and how you can make them. So lots of exciting things that you can do with essential oils. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the cleaning and what you can do with all of the great cleaning things um, with essential oils. So what are essential oils? Um, let's start with that question. What, what are we talking about when we talk about essential oils? So essential oils are the natural aromatic compounds that are found in the seeds, the flowers, the bark, the rind, and the leaves of the plant. And what happens is, is they are extracted and what is extracted and distilled is used for therapeutic benefits. So the essential oils actually come from plants and their role is actually in the plant, their role is to protect the plant. So they protect the plants from bacteria and fungus. They help deter insects and slow decay. And so to extract the actual oil um, from the herb, the plant material is steam distilled um, at an exact temperature and pressure. So what this ha what happens is, is they use this really neat um, process where they go in and they um, extract that essential oil um, that we use for therapeutic benefits. And they um, a lot of times they use a steam distillation where um, the, it, the water, so basically like to create a peppermint essential oil, they'll harvest thousands and thousands of pounds of the leaves. And then what they do is they compress them in this vat and the steam is run through the plant material. So like you have the steam that runs through the actual plant and then the waters and the vapors move through this piping system. And at the end of the distillery process, you're going to get two things. First, you're going to get a floral water that's for perfuming. And then, then the, other, the other thing you're going to get is the essential oil to tap off for health use. So um, just to keep in mind what essential oils are and how, just how much plant material is required to produce just one pound of therape um, certified therapeutic grade Melissa essential oil. And Melissa is not only my name, it's also the name of an essential oil. And to to just get one pound of Melissa essential oil, you have to, um, it takes four tons of plant material. So that is insane. That's a lot of material for just one pound of essential oil. So what happens is, is in this industry, um, it's not regulated, and, um, you know, the oils get um, added, they add additives and different things to make it not as costly. Well, one of the things that I really love about doTERRA essential oils is that they are tested by a third party, and you know that you're getting pure and potent oils. So that really, that peace of mind is priceless for me. And I really um, love the fact that I can benefit from all of the therapeutic um, benefits that these oils offer. So essential oils offer fast, effective relief for like a ton of different things. Anything from acne, allergies, anxiety, asthma, cough, any kind of emotional issue, if you, have, if you have the flu or maybe a migraine or you're experiencing hormonal imbalance or viruses, so many different things, and um, the essential oils can help support you with those, with those different ailments. So let's talk about this slide that's up and, and how 
what we're looking at here. So on the left side, you'll see the peppermint. That's the actual plant, the herb of peppermint. And so what is on the right, you'll see a magnification of the leaf, and you'll see the small oil sacs on the leaf surface. So like I said earlier, what they do is they um, do this process where they basically get those sacks of oil uh, and, and tap them off so that we can use them for therapeutic benefits. So essential oils are basically the live essence of the plant. And unlike herbs, which are usually dried, essential oils carry all of those active chemical constituents that the actual plant has itself. And that's why they're so powerful. I mean, think about what a plant has to do in nature to survive. I mean, we're thinking about that a lot right now in our house. We have a farm, and we are um, in the middle of planting season, and we're we're doing a lot of different things. And and for a plant to survive, to harvest, oh man, the things they have to go to through. It's almost like a war. They have to fend off um, insects. They have to worry about disease, um, contamination, trampling the elements. I mean, these are all of the different things that those plants are fighting off. And and for plants, the essential oils help them do that in their own environment. So these same characteristics are available to us in essential oils as live plant extraction. So let's go to the next slide here. And just want to give you a, a brief view of sort of the supercharged potency of essential oils. So, um, especially with cleaning, um, we're going to talk about household cleaners tonight, and it's so tempting to use more of the oil than is necessary. So just keep this in mind when you're making your cleaners. One drop of peppermint is equal to 28 cups of peppermint tea. So that is some supercharged potency. And the oils are about 50 to 70 times more powerful than just traditional herbs. So these are very powerful things. Um, very, very powerful and very um, and very easy and accessible to use. That's another thing that I love about doTERRA is that it actually makes um, these essential oils very accessible. So you're, I mean, it can be intimidating sometimes to um, jump into the world of herbalism and the world of essential oils, but it's nice to have all of the support and all of these people Sort of coming together to share their knowledge. It's really inspiring. So let's first talk about the diffuser. Now what a diffuser is, is it basically you just put water in it and you add a three to four drops of essential oil and it actually what happens is out of the top of the diffuser comes this mist. And instead of burning candles or using artificial um, you know air sprays and room sprays for your house to smell good, um, we use the diffuser. And not only does it make our house smell good, but it also has those therapeutic benefits. Um, because one of the things to keep in mind is that when you smell something, you know, it, it automatically goes to the limbic part of your brain. Well, the limbic part of your brain is where all of your emotional um qualities are held, that's for your memories, just really um, emotional, uh, sort of like the heart of your brain. So the diffuser is wonderful because you can really affect the mood of a room and uh, with, with trying different blends. For example, um, about three o'clock every day, um, that's my that's sort of where I, what I like to call I hit the wall. <laughs> like I've been up since really early and it's mid-afternoon and I'm thinking about, you know, it's that transition into evening and the evening chores and what has to be done. And I'm still working on things that, you know, you, you know you're know, you getting tired. You, you had lunch a couple hours ago. It's in between dinner. And I just sort of hit this slump. Well, what I have started doing is diffusing orange and peppermint around that time and that gives me this jump that I need, this jump start to, to move forward. So then it also cleans the air and makes it smell really good. So um, another thing that you would you would need for um, essential oils is glass bottles. And um, 
interestingly enough, they're really not that expensive. I just ordered um, six more, and I think they were $1.97 a piece. And I will give you um, a website that you can go to, or you can email me, and I will tell you where you can buy them because they're very, very helpful. And you've got to remember that these essential oils are very powerful, so plastic is not really the best. Um, way to use them because um, you know there might the plastic might actually melt. <laughs> so so glass bottles is how I hold a lot of my cleaners. Um, that's the way I make them. And then also just want to let you know about some resources that are available to you. Um, the Modern Essentials book is a wonderful resource. It has a lot of recipes. It has um, it goes through each different essential oil and tells you everything about it. And then www.neweverythingessential.me is a wonderful website and resource that you can go to and, and type in just about any ailment and it will tell you um, a suggested protocol. So it's very, very helpful. Um, Aroma Tools is another helpful website. And I hope that you'll join me at the Herbal Homestead. We try to um, put a lot of interesting information on there. I do a lot of video classes. I really love teaching. This is my favorite thing in the world to do. So if there's an excuse for me to teach a class, I'll be teaching one. So always check back and, and please join in our mailing list so you'll be up to date on when all of the new classes happen. So also just want to talk about that community and support. It's so important um, in this in this venture of learning about essential oils and getting involved with herbalism to have this community and we have a wonderful community over at the herbal homestead it's a facebook group we also have a facebook page but i encourage you to come to the facebook group um, and just engage and ask questions um, it's a wonderful place to share so very very um, helpful place for you to go and oh my, and I just have to mention this, the friends you'll meet, I've met some of the greatest people and it's just been wonderful. So the first question you sort of ask yourself is why would I ever use essential oils for cleaning? Well, there are a actually kill germs safely. So they aren't toxic. They don't pollute our water supply. We don't have to worry about it killing the environment. So that, you know, that's a really big peace of mind. Um, I actually, in, in, in addition to doing the Herbal Homestead, um, I published an online publication called From Scratch Magazine. And I started that publication because um, of this journey that I'm on where I have, you know, I just want to know what's in the things that I eat and I want to know what's in the things that I'm putting on my body and I want to know what, what are the things that are in the cleaners that I use and I want to know all of these things and I don't want all of these foreign, um, you know, words, these scientific words that we've never heard of um, on the back of every single thing that we use. I just don't feel comfortable with it. And I also, in my own personal journey, have found that I have a lot of, uh, of, of food allergies, which I think are a direct, I think there's a correlation for me personally um, between those un, unrecognizable words and some of the symptoms that I face. And so that brought me to this journey of, okay, well, I need to take control of what I put in my body and what I allow inside my own home. So instead of all of those toxic side effects, essential oils have healthy benefits. So for example, if you were to use lemon in your cleaner, not only is it a natural antibiotic and antimicrobial um, oil, it also has this wonderful scent and it's so energizing. And, you know, I dare you to smell lemon and not feel good. Actually, my daughter, who's nine years old and loves the oils, lemon is her favorite oil, and she calls it the sunshine oil. So she'll say, hey, I need to smell the sunshine oil. So it just makes her feel really good, and it's a happy oil. So another thing that is really important 
um, to remember, and I talked about this earlier, and I'll talk about it again, but gosh, these oils are so powerfully concentrated. So it only takes a little amount to really go a long way. So you're only using very tiny amounts um, to make your cleaner. So it helps you save a ton of money. So why make a change? Um, did you know that most of the chemicals in your household cleaning products are very harmful or even toxic? So let's let's talk about a little bit about poison control. So children under the age of five and under, they make up about more than half, 51% of all poison exposures. So the U.S. Poison Control Center, they receive a call about every 12.7 seconds. So what do you think those calls are about? I mean, I can just imagine it's either they've gotten to their mama's or daddy's medicine or they've gotten underneath the cabinet, under you know, where all the cleaners are. So nearly 83% of poison exposures are unintentional. So it's, you know, a child who doesn't know what they're what they're ingesting um and they don't mean to do that but it's so it's unintentionally um very harmful so almost half of teen poison exposures are intentional so just to give you some facts about how you know where we are with with the toxic um, chemicals and the household cleaning products that you have in your home so just to show you, household cleaning products account for 8.6% of all poison exposures. So that's a really big percentage um, to tout for, for the household cleaning products. Okay, so I talk about Mr. Yuck. This is Mr. Yuck. I talk about him a lot because I remember when I was a kid, I would open the cabinet underneath the sink and I would see a whole bunch of bottles with this sticker on it. And basically, that sticker is saying, don't eat me, <laughs> don't ingest me. And I remember my mother telling me, if you see this sticker on anything, do not put it in your mouth. I remember specifically her saying that. You know, I haven't seen one of these stickers in a while, but um, maybe we should bring that back. But you will not need these stickers in your home if you make your cleaners with essential oils. So did you know that over 100,000 children um, under the age of six, are sickened by household cleaners each year. So that's over 100,000 kids. That's a huge number. Um, you know, and then let's look at fragrances. Fragrances used in cleaners, they can cause a lot of different issues. For instance, um, it can co fragrances can cause respiratory irritation. I find that to be true of myself. Um, if I walk by somebody and they have a very heavy perfume on, I can sort of like feel it in the back of my throat. They can also cause headaches, sneezing, um, watery eyes. About a third of all of the substances used by the fragrance industry are toxic. So, I mean, keep that in mind when you go to that store in the mall that smells, you know, you can smell it halfway down the aisle. <laughs> you know, they have all of these um, different chemicals and those lotions and um, and those different cleaners. And you can just smell the, you know, it just, I can't even deal with the smell. And my husband, you know, we've never been big candle burners or air freshener users because he can't Stand to have any kind of smell uh, that is, you know, at all. So he can take the essential oils and it doesn't bother him one bit. So I say to all of you who have spouses who might be a little hesitant about letting different smells into the house, tell them to give it a try because my husband was the same way and you can say, you can tell them, you know, hey, this lady I know, Melissa, her husband was the same as you, and she, her husband has no problem and doesn't have any of the issues that um, he has with, like, scented candles or things like that. So another thing we want, I want to tell you about, did you know that phenols are used in disinfectants and toilet bowl cleaners, and they're very toxic to the respiratory and circulatory system? So phenols are one thing that you do not want hanging around. And, you know, I don't know about you, but 
you know, we have to clean the toilets. It's not fun, <laughs> but it's something that has to be done. Um, and we use a lot of different disinfectants. And um, I'm happy that the disinfectants that our family uses are not toxic. And that just brings me such peace of mind on so many different levels. So, all right, here's some other unpronounceable words <laughs> that we're going to get into. Diethylene is used in window cleaners. And what that does is it actually depresses the nervous system. And then you probably are familiar with this word, formaldehyde. Um, formaldehyde is used in any spray and wick deodorizers. And it's a respiratory irritant. And, it, you know, a lot of people don't like it because they suspect it to be a really yucky carcinogen. So very um, yucky stuff that's in Mr. Yuck, Yuck, Mr. Yuck stuff and all of these different things. So um, a lot of these different cleaners, they have petroli petroleum in it. So solvents and floor, floor cleaners, um, what they can do is, what, what the petroleum can do is it can actually damage those mucous membranes and they can contribute to, of course, the depletion of a non-renewable natural resource. So we all know that petroleum. There's we're gonna we're gonna get to the end of that um, that supply soon. You know we're gonna, it's gonna happen. We just you know we keep moving forward and and acting like the actions that we do don't have any consequences. And so we know that petroleum is a non-renewable natural resource, and we need to start acting like it. So many cleaners are pollutants. So they contribute to smog. They're going to reduce the quality of the drinking water that you drink. And they're very toxic to animals. So, you know, I I keep this in mind. You know, when you go and you just dump something or leave something out, you know, you have to think about the animals that um, can become subjected to that. And, you know, it reminds me of a story. One of my friends was telling me she had um, the bug man come and do her house. And they, I guess they sprayed her house for, I don't, I don't know if it was just for bugs or, or whatever, but they, they did like, they went and sprayed it. And she didn't even think about her birds or her fish. And when she came back after her house was sprayed, both, all of her birds were dead as well as her fish. They were all dead. I mean, these are like, you know, you've got to think about how, um, the things that we use are toxic to animals, and it can be easy to forget that. So, do essential oils kill germs? Yes, yes, they do. Essential oils kill germs. Studies show that no bacteria, virus, or fungus can survive oregano or cinnamon essential oils, even when they're diluted. That is a really powerful statement, and there are lots of studies to back it up. And um, I encourage you to go to Aromatic Science. I think it's aromaticscience.org or .com. Just put it in Google, Aromatic Science. And there's a lot of studies at that particular website. They're scientific studies, so it's not really um, a lot of fun reading. But what it will do is it will tell you a lot of the studies that are happening. And so just so you know, there no bacteria, virus, or fungus. I mean, this is powerful stuff can survive oregano or cinnamon essential oils, even when you dilute them. So guess what, guys? Spring is here. It's tomorrow, I think. Isn't tomorrow the first day of spring? Um, so spring cleaning is on. I know it's on my mind. I really, um, this time of year, it's like you shift gears from the winter hibernation into this. You, there's more sunlight. And it's just, you know, everybody's thinking about renewal. So spring cleaning is on everybody's mind. So let's talk about some key oils for killing those germs and, and keeping your house clean. Um, the first one is oregano, and we just talked about oregano. And oregano is a very powerful, powerful oil. So it's antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic, and it's going to destroy virus, bacteria, fungus, and mold. So just like we said earlier, and also it's great at fighting any kind of cold or flu if it's coming on. So oregano is a wonderful oil to use in your um, house cleaning regimen. Peppermint is another great oil. Peppermint is antibacterial and antiviral. Um, 
I love peppermint and because of so many different things. One of them is that it disturbs, it deters spiders, which I'm not a big fan of, and ants, which I don't like either. So, um, very, very wonderful oil that you, it's very versatile. You can use it for so many things. I use it if I'm nauseous, and then I also add it to foods and drinks sometimes. So, um, it really is pretty neat. It makes a really good mimosa, if you're wondering. So, lemon, the sunshine oil. <laughs> it's, this lemon is amazing. Um, it has, Antimicrobial, um, antiseptic, fungicidal, insecticidal. These are all words that, that, that lemon can do. So it's going to dissolve those sticky substances. Actually, this just happened the other day. I bought a frame. And I mean, do you ever wonder why when you buy a frame, they put the sticker right on the glass at the front? Why do they do that? I don't understand. I wish somebody would tell me because when you take off that sticker, it leaves this like little sticky glue on the front of your frame when you put the picture in and you're like, geez, how, you know, it just takes 20 minutes to get the sticky residue off. Well, the other day I used lemon and it just came right up. It was just, I was like, wow, lemon, you just saved 20 minutes of my life. Thank you. And I also use lemon to polish chrome and I use it to polish wood. So if you have a, um, a motorcyclist in your house who has a motorcycle whole bunch of chrome, lemon is a great oil for them. Um, and then I actually just got a bed. Um, you know, it's, it's an old bed that is a sleigh bed and the wood leaves some, you know, it's not, <laughs> it needed a good cleaning. Let me say that. Well, I use lemon on it and it's just amazing. It also removes marker. So if you have a kid who, we, I mean, it seems like every child does this. You know, they write on the walls. Um, lemon will help get, take care of that. And also, just like we said earlier with my daughter Hannah, um, you know, smelling lemon is just such an uplifting scent. And it can automatically, right when you smell it, immediately uplift your mood. So another oil that I really enjoy is rosemary. I really like to diffuse rosemary. Um, and it's antibacterial, anti-infectious, and antifungal. So, and it's also great at stimulate, stimulating your mental activity. So it's really, if you want to concentrate, if you want to increase concentration, and I do this for my son and my daughter whenever we're testing them or, or they have a project due or something like that, I have them put a little drop of rosemary in the inside of their collar, and that really helps them concentrate. So very, very um, neat. It's really cool to go through all of the oils and see how versatile, just how versatile they are, because all of these oils can also be used for a multitude of different therapeutic things. Um, so just, it's so exciting. Can you tell I'm excited? So let's jump in. Okay, um, let's see here. I don't really mind doing laundry so much. I guess what I'm trying to ask is, what is your least favorite chore? My least favorite chore is, is washing the dishes. And I've actually had to make myself create this, like, way to do the dishes where I don't hate it so much. So this is what I do. Seriously, this is what I have done. I have gone to the link of, I have bought a tub that I bought like from a restaurant supply place, you know, like the bus boys, they have those tubs. I bought one of those. So all of the dirty dishes go in there just like they would at a restaurant. And I have that on my counter um, because we don't use a dishwasher, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> so I also got this really cool tub that I put in my sink. And I just, you know what I did? I Googled the fastest and most efficient way to wash dishes. And that's what I do. So I I fill up that tub with soapy water um, that I make with my essential oils. And then beside that, I fill up a little bit of water that rinse water um, in the other sink. And I just put on some really good music or a podcast or an audio book. And I just make sure that I have one of the big things that they said in the suggestions, because, yes, I did Google this, <laughs> was to um, make sure that the dishwashing um, liquid that you're using smells good. Um, so lemon just came to my mind, and that's what I use in mine, and it's 
just wonderful. It, not only does it work really well, but it's just, it makes it a better experience for me personally because I hate doing dishes. But, you know, I don't mind doing laundry so much. So it's weird how it's sort of um, what people, different people have different um, likes and, and dislikes. So um, let's look at some antibacterial um, oils that you can use for cleaning. So this is places where you want to get rid of bacteria. And thyme is a good one. Melaleuca, which is from Australia, um, is a wonderful one, and it's a type of tea tree. So it's a really great oil to use for um, antibacterial purposes. Geranium, oregano, just like we said, oregano, cinnamon, um, lemon, peppermint, rosemary, lime, lemongrass. All of these are really great um, antibacterial oils. So if you want antibacterial and antiviral, which, you know, I just have to mention this. One really cool thing about essential oils is that um, that's different than from Western medicine um, is that essential oils can actually penetrate the cell membrane and attack a virus, whereas like an antibiotic cannot. So if you've ever gone to the doctor and you've just had this horrible sickness and and he tells you that it's a virus and there's not really anything that he can do but send you home and tell you to wait it out. Well, with essential oils, the essential oils actually go in and can penetrate that cell membrane to where the virus is because the essential oils are so permeable. So very, very neat. Um, cinnamon, clove, eucalyptus, lemon, marjoram, melaleuca, oregano, and thyme. These are really good choices if you're looking for something um, to fight bacteria and virus. So um, degreasing. Oh, if you want, you have those pans that you need to get degreased. Lemon, wild orange, bergamot, wonderful to use for that. So if you're wanting to freshen, like if you're wanting to make things smell good, um, lemon is great. Again, lemon smells so good. Bergamot, wild orange. Wild orange is one of my favorites. I really like wild orange. Um, I use. I think wild orange can turn anybody's frown upside down. That is how much I love that oil. It's one of my favorites. It smells so good and it's so easy and to use and I just use it all the time. Um, so anyway, grapefruit, basil, peppermint, these are all really freshening oils. So Okay, so it's getting it's going to be this time of year soon where we're going to start talking about insects. And here, wow, there's a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of flies, and when we work in the field, there's just everything. Um, so, you know, that's when we think about insect preventers. So peppermint, like we said, will keep the ants and spiders away. Patchouli's good at keeping the moths away. Melaleuca is wonderful for keeping that lice away. Um, you know, if there's a lice outbreak at your child's school or daycare, or you just come in contact with somebody who has it. Um, eucalyptus is wonderful for dust mites. Um, so very, very um, great ways to implement essential oils into your everyday life. And trust me, I use oils all day, every day. Um, I actually am wearing Whisper, which is a women's blend, and I think it smells heavenly, and I use it um, as my perfume. And so during the day, I will actually just take a second and smell the my inner wrist and, oh, it just smells so good. Okay, so let's get back to mold. Yuck, mold. So cinnamon, melaleuca, oregano, clove. Clove is really cool oil as well. It's on the, it's off the charts on the Orex scale. Um, very, very powerful oil. Thyme, rosemary, these are all great for fighting mold. So, oh, and I want to tell you about this blend of oil. It's um, Purify, and it's really great. It's, it's a cleansing blend, and it removes odors. It's going to help you disinfect any kind of surfaces. It detoxifies the body, and it's going to kill any airborne bacteria or viruses. So I, I actually um, diffuse this a lot, too, in addition to using it in my cleaners. So um, we, we're talking about oils, and, you know, they really will save you money. They're going to not only save you money and help you, they're going to help you stay safe. 
So let's say you purchase a non-toxic all-purpose cleaner. And, oh my goodness, it contains two, okay, I'm going to try to pronounce this, butoxethanol. Yeah, I don't think I was right. <laughs> but anyway, it's one of those unpronounceable words that you see on the back of a bottle of anything nowadays. Um, but basically, that particular uh, ingredient is a possible carcinogen that damages your red blood cells, an immense contaminant tied to asthma, cancer, hormone disruption, and neurotoxicity. Wow. So if you dispose of this, you have to treat it as hazardous waste. You can't just throw it in the garbage. So 32 ounces of this costs about $5. Okay, now in the ring is homemade all-purpose cleaner. And it contains all natural ingredients that are found in most kitchens across the country. And you know what? You don't have to treat it as hazardous waste. And let me tell you, the fact that you can use your cleaners and not treat them as hazardous waste, man, winner, winner, winner. That's amazing. So let's look at some more spring cleaning. So essential oils, you know, we said they can kill bacteria and germs and fungi and mold, um, you know, and there's just so many reasons to go all natural with your cleaning products. And, you know, and it's just, you know, there's no need to go out and use a lot of these products. Um, and, you know, in fact, some of them are really just, they, they make things worse because they, they um, actually encourage, you know, things like superbugs and things like that. So here's some of the items that you can use with the essential oils. Um, I actually have baking soda. Um, very easy. Um, that's an easy one. Um, liquid Castile soap. I have this. Um, if you don't have um, one, if you've never used this before, Target has it. You can buy it online. I think I bought my last one. I actually bought one yesterday. Um, I was running out from Whole Foods and it was on sale. So, And I had a coupon, which was nice. So in vinegar, this is another really great item to use. So... All right, let's talk about multi-purpose Melaleuca. So Melaleuca is really ideal for cleaning because it has so many cool, um, powerful things that it does. It's a powerful antibacterial, powerful antimicrobial, it's antiseptic, antiviral, um, fungicidal, and insecticidal. So it can be used as a deodorant. We put in our deodorant. It's a Great for a foot spray or a hand sanitizer. If you have a sore throat, it's really helpful. Um, if you need to clean out any kind of wound, very, very, very helpful. It's great for cold sores. If you boils, pimples, all that yucky stuff, it's really good for that. If you have an earache, usually what I'll do if I have an earache is I'll take a cotton ball and put a drop or two, you know, put two or three drops on the cotton ball and put it in my ear, um, put the cotton ball in my ear, and it just, it's like magic. Um, also, Melaleuca was found as effective in treating fungal nail infections um, as the popular prescription drug. So I have seen um, people who have used Melaleuca with great results for any kind of like toe fungus. Um, yuck, let's not talk about that anymore. <laughs> so how many chemicals would Melaleuca remove from your home? I mean, it's a lot. I mean, just think of how much money one bottle of Melaleuca could save you. You can make so many different things. And what's so cool about it is you know what's in what you made. And it works. So it's really cool. I mean, it's really, it, it's just a, an amazing thing to me to have that power. All right, so let's talk about some recipes. Let's go in and, and really um, talk about some different ways that you can make these different uh, cleaners. And the first one is a floor cleaner. Um, so, yeah, we have to clean those floors. <laughs> you know, I am. I have always been... I've never been the best housekeeper, and I try really hard, and I try really hard to keep it, whereas some people, it's just 
very easy and simple for them. For me, it's a lot harder. So I have to make really strict routines and follow by them and, um, you know, just really make an effort. So by making all of these cleaners, it has just sort of incentivized, it gives me an incentive to keep going and to keep my schedule and and make sure that, um, you know, I make my bed every day and things like that. So um, just in case, you know, if there's any other messy, naturally messy people out there just like me, you know, let's band together and make our own homemade cleaners. Um, And for all of you that are really, really neat, it's even better because guess why? You um, now have the power power to make your own cleaners and, and you can alter these recipes however you see fit. So floor cleaners. Um, I have found that this works really, really well. And I actually use a large bucket. And what I do is just put a gallon of really hot water in it. And I'll put two tablespoons of like that liquid Castile soap. And then I'll put wild orange and lemon essential oils in there. So, um, and then you just put it in, you just put the mop in and it just, oh, the house smells amazing and it really works really well. So, very simple. We know it's all in all of those things. You know, we don't have to wear rubber gloves and a surgical mask. <laughs> you know, we don't. We don't have to. Um, you know, this is not. Doesn't have to be treated like a toxic. You know, chemical. So very nice. So also, if you have wood floors, this is really great. Um, very good. It's not going to hurt your floors. It's going to make it shine and look so good. Um, and it's a fourth a cup of olive oil, a fourth a cup of vinegar, and then you just put 10 drops of essential oils. And I usually use um, the lemon. So you can try wild orange or lemon, whatever whatever you like. And then you just mix it up, and then you apply it and wipe it off. And that's what I actually use. I use that for a lot of different things. But it's really great for any kind of wood floors. If you have, um, you know, I we hardwoods are hard to keep clean sometimes and this really makes them shine we have some old wood floors that this has just really brought the life back to so soft scrub if you have you know those bathroom issues cleaning out the bathtub and the toilet this is what you want to use and it's so simple because you have all of these things already and you're in your um, kitchen cabinet at least i do um so, and this is really, this recipe is really cool because you can actually, um, it's for, it's enough for two or four um, applications. So, you can just put in an airtight container. I like to use mason jars. I just, you know, everything's in a mason jar around here. We do all kinds of stuff. We ferment food, it's in a mason jar. We drink out of mason jars. <laughs> we, um, you know, I make bath salt out of, with um, mason jars. I do all kinds of stuff with um I make my moisturizer, all my cleaners. So um the mason jar is definitely your friend if you're making homemade cleaners. So all you do is take some baking soda, some castile soap, um, some water and vinegar and then your oil and that you have a wonderful scrub that is just amazing. Um so it's basically like a really soft paste and you just rub the paste in. Um it's just really cool. So, oh, this is, I thought this was a great tip to share because I found this very helpful. Just use lime essential oil to help remove grease spots in the kitchen. And what I have done, because I have a 17-year-old son who likes to cook and he doesn't like to clean up. So sometimes, you know, you can you can walk in the kitchen and tell exactly what he had to eat because every, you know, there's a trail. <laughs> so, um, you know, our stove can get quite messy. So I use the lime and it comes right off the Pretty neat how that works. Okay, so an all-purpose spray, you know, just basically it's vinegar and distilled water, um, or you just boil tap water, um, and then you put the ten drops of whatever oil you want to use. Um, you know, you can mix it up, and you just, you know, with the oils, uh, you can. I use lemon a lot just because I like it, and wild orange, I really like it. I have wild orange right now, actually. Um, and you just mix it all together in a spray bottle and you just shake it before each use and there you are. There's your all-purpose spray. So pretty nifty, huh? Dish soap. I mean, really, did you know you can make your own dish soap? 
I didn't know. I didn't know before I started researching. I mean, it's been some years ago, but I was like, you know, I just thought there was dawn. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like they they grew dawn and it came out of a out of the ground somehow. But anyway, you can very easily make your own dish soap. This is so easy. Um, use two cups of Castile soap, uh, half a cup of warm water, and then three drops of essential oil. So either use peppermint, eucalyptus, or the citrus oils. And then you just put it in a, in a, um, you know, an old dish soap bottle. I actually put mine in, you know those olive oil dispensers um, that has a little spout at the end? I put it in one of those, and I just shake it really good before I use it. So it's really good. It works really well. Um, so, and you know, this is so cool. I really, since I've been making this, I mean, it's so neat. The foaming hand soap, very easy. I mean, all you do um, is, just fill the dispense, you, you fill the water, you put water in there, and then you put peppermint or almond castile soap, just one to two teaspoons, and then you put three to five drops of whatever essential oil. And basically, you just put it all together. And you can actually even, um, I don't do this, but you can add a drop of food coloring if you want to make it a different color. So, and then you just shake it up, and it works. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, so we talked a little bit about Purify earlier, but this is a great cleansing blend, and I just wanted to tell you um, what was included, like what the blend was. And it's basically a blend of lemon, lime, pine, citronella, melaleuca, and cilantro. So very, very powerful stuff, and it smells really good too. It really um, purifies the air, and you know I. I really like the smell of it, and it's um, it's great at getting rid of it. Like if you cook something that's really smelly, it's really good at getting rid of that scent. Okay, so we really had fun going through all of these homemade green cleaning recipes. Um, so what I'm going to do is if you um, were on this call, I'm going to email you a copy of the uh, with a document with all of the different recipes we talked about. And also if you go to theherbalhomestead.com and sign up to get my free book, you'll also get um, you'll also get the, the recipes in that as well. So I do want to take a moment and tell you how to get how to buy these awesome essential oils that you can use for therapeutic use and you can use for your own cleaners and you can use for your own beauty routines and your own first aid kit. Um, it's really rather simple and it's very similar to Costco. Um, anybody go to Costco or Sam's Club? We don't have, unfortunately, we don't have a Costco near us. Well, I don't in the same town. We have to travel a couple towns over, which I do um, sometimes. But we do have a Sam's Club, and I go there quite frequently. And um, I pay an annual membership fee, and that's basically what you do with doTERRA. It's $35 a year, and then with that, you will be able to buy your oils at wholesale. So that's really cool um, to be able to buy your oils. It's a really good discount. And then, you know, we have a really wonderful loyalty rewards program where basically the more oils you buy, the more oils you get for free. So really cool stuff. I get tons of free oils. And let me just tell you, every month it's like it's like Christmas. Um, but there's no obligation, no you know, no contract to sign as far as, you know, you know, having to commit to anything. This is just basically a wholesale membership. And what's really cool is if you were to purchase oils from me, like I would suggest that you purchase a kit because with the kit, your um, wholesale membership fee is waived. So you don't have to pay that fee, which is really nice. I don't like to pay fees. So here's what you'll get. You're going to get the tools you need to take care of yourself and your family naturally. And you can do it from your own home. This is where the healer in every home comes into play. I I mean, that's just where my heart is. I really feel like I want to help there be a healer in every home. Um, so you'll also get a personal mentorship with me in my network. And we're going to help you. We're going to 
the last thing in the world that I want is somebody to purchase a kit and have it sit on a shelf. We will walk you through it every step of the way. You'll have somebody there. You'll have somebody you'll be able to ask questions to, and you'll be part of a wonderful community. And also, just get ready for more energy, for less pain. Get ready. Get ready to feel your best. Wonderful. Um, to You'll see such a difference. So there is this awesome offer where, now this is my favorite kit. It's the Home Essentials Kit. And let me tell you why it's my favorite kit. Because you're going to get, first you're going to get the diffuser. And let me tell you, the diffuser, you need a diffuser. It's awesome. I have a diffuser in every room just about it at our house. And we use them all the time. And you're going to get full-size bottles of oils. You're going to get frankincense. Oh, and if you do not know what frankincense can do for you, please check out one of my other videos where I go into deeper detail because that is an amazing oil. Um, there's a saying in the essential oil community that is like, when in doubt, use frankincense. So frankincense is such a powerful oil. Lavender is another really great oil. We call it the Swiss Army knife um, in essential oils. So very, very great. Lemon you're going to get, which you can use for cleaning. Melaleuca, 15 milliliter. These are all the full-size bottles. Melaleuca is also, didn't we say, wonderful for cleaning. Oregano is another one. Um, Digestin is wonderful for any kind of tummy trouble. On Guard is a great protective blend. And then Deep Blue is a great soothing blend. So if you have any muscle or pain or joint pain or bone pain, it's a really great blend. Um, peppermint, which is good for cleaning, and Breathe, which is great for your respiratory system, and then that diffuser, which is amazing. So if you get that Home Essentials kit, you're going to save $86.25. And so, and also that $35 enrollment fee is waived. So plus you're going to get the 25% off um, wholesale membership, and you don't have to worry about the, the wholesale that that fee that's the $35 value you're going to get a free essential oil consultation with me I'm going to talk to you on the phone or on Skype or on email or on whatever you want <laughs> however you want it we're going to talk and um, I'm going to give you a consultation which is a $40 value and just for this month just for the month of March there is this amazing deal where if you were to sign up um, and get you know, and, and purchase one of those kits, you're going to get a free deep blue rub and a free deep blue oil, which is an $81.67 retail value. So really great deal. So you're looking at almost $200 of free stuff. So I really had such a great time with you guys tonight. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat window. Um, and if you are in... Um, in online land, I I please encourage you to visit theherbalhomestead.com. And thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening.